Welcome. Hi, Melinda. Hi, Melinda. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you for asking me to speak this morning. And I'll tell you, listening to that story, I read that many years ago. I think I was still working, so it's been a little while <laughs> since I heard it. Uh, but it reminded me of me because accepting change is really difficult. When you get used to things being a certain way and they work for you, then you want to step out and learn something new and you think, oh no, this is, this, is, this is not how I've been doing things and now I have to learn a whole new thing. Is this really going to work for me? But that's what the situation I found myself in. I love reading, as most people know. I mean, I got enough books, I could start my own bookstore. And uh, I'm sure they would be quite jealous of me. <laughs> but we have all this knowledge and I wanted to share it with other people. And I couldn't figure out how to do this uh, and still do what I love. So I ended up trying different things before I realized that I was pushing away the one thing I truly enjoyed and that's writing. So I started working with people with writing and that began with a, a friend who was going through some things because of COVID. And I had this idea, why don't we get together and let's write and talk. That worked for her. And I'm happy to say she's back to the person that I met years ago out there doing things and it, gave me such a great feeling that I thought maybe I could help others. So that's what I've been doing. The journaling evolved into creative writing and with the creative writing, the personal development because the writing wasn't enough. I had to show people that through the writing, you can find yourself. You learn to express those things that you held back for years and it's a growing you truly do change and become better for it. However, my challenge is knowing how to market what I do. If that you would think it would be easy, but it isn't. I'm in a number of successful networking groups and I share the fact that I work with people who are interested in transformation, because when you get to be a certain age, that's another thing. You start thinking, well, what do I have left to offer? Who cares what you have to offer? Are you good enough? You didn't go to school for that. So seriously, you want to do this? Those are the kind of things that were going through my head, even though I was speaking of what I do. And many people were excited about it and thought it was a great idea, but they still didn't sign up to join with me. And any suggestions on how to approach these individuals in a perhaps different way from what I've done in the past would be greatly appreciated. I cannot tell you how many times I've had people um, in the last few weeks who have actually approached me and said, I've been watching you and I've seen the growth in you. That's a plus because I've actually gotten three clients from that. But I'd like to do better. Um, the difficulties you run into or things like, well, forget, I mentioned the marketing, uh, is how to approach the people that you want in it, the wording that you should use so that they don't feel put on or looked down, because I don't consider this a light situation. And I seriously take this um, as one of my callings. Having gone through 
a period when I felt like, well, I just might as well just say it. I really was depressed. And I hate using that word because all my life, people have always thought of me as being strong. Uh, I don't have problems. And suddenly I found myself in a bad place where I was having problems and I didn't know who to talk to for the simple reason that nobody seemed ready to hear that I was having problems because they came to me. You're not supposed to have problems. You were supposed to be there when I need to talk to someone about a problem. And I ended up writing that in a journal, which later became a book for me. And I thought that might help me because it, it did get me more speaking opportunities when people found out I had a book. Some of them bought the book and they actually uh, came back and told me that so much of what I put in that book resonated with them and made a difference. But once again, I didn't know how to approach or market to them in a way that they didn't feel put upon. And so that's the help that I'm seeking today from all of you. Any suggestions, as I said, will be very much welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Lobana. Wow. The real life story of how to come into a situation and then now looking for our feedback on how to resolve some of those issues. So I see Rosabelle's hand up. Rosabelle, why don't you start our 10 minute discussion so all of us can take a, a little time and offer some feedback to Dr. Lawana. You're muted. This is the common dilemma of those who help others. And that is that others may not see them as needing help, but then also they don't see themselves as needing help. And probably the best way to, to help others and actually be the, the role model is to be an example. Even if you had, or if you did have your own weaknesses, I and mean, those of you who heard my contest speech, even though I didn't win, I was very weak throughout my life. I failed at every little, I failed PE in high school. <laughs> so that, that made me one of the weakest little dinglings in, in the class. And yet at the end, I found that by my own example, I found the strength. And I think being honest and, you know, first of all, realizing that you have a weakness or that you need help or that you are depressed is the first step. And then not being afraid to ask for help. In my case, I wasn't afraid to ask for help. I was just like totally ignorant about what was wrong with me. <laughs> and, and so I, I just kept fainting and I didn't know why, but I, I did ask for help. And eventually it took many minds to figure it out. But whether it takes one mind on, or one close friend or many friends or even many customers, I think probably the lesson learned is being an example and being a role model is the best way that you can ultimately help others. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Rosabelle. Okay, Bond, your hand is up. Oh, thank you. Dr. Lavana, first suggestion. Can you, in your introduction, can you take the word women off? Because you inspire everyone, including me. And I'm a man. And I, I tell you, I bought both of, of your books. I enjoy them so much. You are a very good writer, very natural, and very talented. So as far as the real practical suggestions, are concerned, I have no suggestion because your challenges are my challenges and your dilemma, dilemmas are my dilemmas too. I've been writing for many years too. Uh, since considered going professional and uh, get some income out of the writing, I feel that. 
So I'm not here to give you a suggestion. I don't have very, I don't have any success story. I'm trying to steal any suggestion from uh, whoever in the audience. Uh, I sense like medium, I in the beginning try to increase the viewership. I just found that the, the ratio of your investment and the, the return is not worthy. I spent tremendous time, uh, got all the interaction, which I really didn't enjoy doing. But I got maybe like like twenty bucks per month. This is really not worth doing, so I stopped that. But uh, I'm not sure that's the right decision. Maybe this book can we can find some answer from this book who moved my cheese. But in the, just give my own example. The reason I bought a book because I saw you. I kind of like you, the way you talk and the message you send out. So I bought your book physically from, from Amazon. I, I pay money for that. So the, the, when, the way you when this specific client is presenting yourself. So go anywhere you can, maybe present to your face and you have your message. Maybe you can attract some clients, but that is a very practical way. I'm not sure. I just tell my story. Thank you. Dr. Thank you, Ban. Thank you so much. Yes, it sounds like your book, Dr. Lawana, was a big help. And it expressed what you wanted to share to people and tell your story. So it invites people to want to listen more to you and seek your advice. Suzanne Leonard, will you unmute and tell us what suggestions you might have for our speaker? Absolutely. Thank you, Roz, for the privilege. Dr. Luana, one of your strengths as I hear you and see you is your, your courage and your authenticity, your willingness to bring forth the fact that, that you're looking for your cheese, you're in the movement of going forward in your own life. And I think in sharing that, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or in your next book, um, I'm on the path with you a little further along because I have some books and I have some credentials if you wanna bring in that part. But I think that will enhance and, and add value to the fact that you're on the track as well. You've got your shoes on, you are walking your talk or running your talk, however that goes. I think that's a real plus for you as you go forth and your audience, your clients will find you as Vaughn alluded to, because your message is strong and authentic and personal and um, very courageous. When we bring forth the best that was in us, sometimes it's a little scary. So uh, congratulations on your work so far. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Yes, Luana is courageous taking on this new adventure and seeking our advice. I see Charles' hand is up. Charles, will you unmute? Okay, I'm in, unmuted now. Dr. Luana, one of the suggestions I would make to you, are you familiar with Dr. George C. Frazier? You're muted. I'm sorry. No, I don't think I've, I've heard that name before. <laughs> okay, look him up. He's written a lot of books, including Success Runs in Our Race. One of the things that he just mentioned at our last meeting was that he is using Chat GBT to write his next book by inputting his other books into it you may want to input your books into AI and have them come up with a marketing plan for you. Good idea. I've heard some other people mention the same thing about using chat uh, GPT for writing their books, even new ones. Uh, I haven't tried it yet, but it does sound like an interesting idea. I did want to mention before my time is up is that Today is a milestone for me, and I should have put it in my presentation. Today marks 1,095 consecutive blog posts 
Wow. That's a total wow. of three years wow. straight of writing, and I am so excited about that. Wow, wow. that wow. is amazing. I was just and, trying to make 31 days. I had no idea it would go into this. Yeah, that's the name of your book. And it's funny how blogs can take a life of its own. Mm -hmm. Once you start writing, then you want to say more and more. And I know we have several people here. I know Taya has a blog. Bond has a blog. I'm not sure if Rosabelle or Nora or even Melinda has a blog. Frankie, you might have a blog. But, you know, it's it's something to just allow yourself to free flow the writing skills that you have, but to continue telling your story. So I hope all of us in this club will take advantage of blogging and even writing a book. I don't see any other hands up, but if anyone else wants to share some comments or suggestions to Dr. Lawana. I the the uh, the last suggestion was on teaming up with people. And I know that we are teaming up as mentors and mentees. Perhaps the person you're teaming up with can offer some advice or take it further. Like in Who Moved My Cheese? Will you stand still? Or will you continue to seek change and enjoy the change? Imagine yourself with that new cheese and how you can express yourself in a new environment with a new story. And marketing, have a marketing plan to take it further, whether you do the marketing yourself or you ask someone or hire someone to help you with marketing. Are there any other comments or suggestions for Dr. Lawana's business challenge? Mm -hmm. Okay, Bond put in the chat box, marketing is the most difficult part. Does anyone want to talk about marketing for a minute? What you're doing, Charles, I know you do a lot of marketing. And I know Taya is doing some marketing. Frankie, unmute yourself and tell us what you suggest. Well, one thing about marketing is it, ha it has a bad rap a lot of times. People resist it. But if you look at it from the perspective of who would you be denying the expertise that you have to, to deliver if you don't put yourself out there and connect with them. We're all here to serve, I think, in one capacity or another. We all have specific knowledge we've gained over the years. And there are people that are just really begging for what we know. So we all could be coaches. We all could be mastermind leaders. But if, you, if you're resisting marketing, because of our own ego and our own fear of rejection, maybe. Think of it from a different perspective. Who would I be denying this knowledge if I don't put myself out there? So I just thought that that comes from Tony Robbins and Dee Graciosa. And I, it, it's helped me a lot in how I approach this coaching program that I'm trying to launch online. Oh, that's you, amazing, Frankie. You know, I listen to Tony Robbins and Dean Graziosi a lot as well. And they have mindful, master mindful suggestions. Join their mastermind, join them online, catch what they're doing and what they're saying. And you just might hear something that you just needed to hear. Because like Frankie said, someone needs to hear it and you're denying them that access. So keep that open. Luana, because sometimes there's people out there and we don't know it yet, but like you said with your book, people were surprised to read about and hear about your story. Rosabelle. Thank you. The, um, I, I think with marketing, marketing and sales frequently get lumped together. And then I know one of the things I noticed when I came to this country 
we we used to shop in in Europe by going into a store and my mom would tell them what she needed and they would measure her and they would make something for her. When we came to the United States, I noticed that the store was there and it, the salesmen are telling you what you're supposed to want. And so it, my, my brain was turned around about what, what shopping is about. And I hated shopping. To this day, I hate to go even grocery shopping because I <laughs> want to go to the market and say, like my grandmother would say, I want this cut of meat. And the butcher would make that cut of meat for her. Not it's there in the package and you better take it and you better pay for it the way we made it for you. And then the salesman concentrates on making you buy what he has. I think the truth in marketing and, you know, being a doctor, I obviously can't give people the disease I want them to have. So luckily I picked a, a career where I get to practice my, my beginnings appreciation and understanding of marketing and sales. And that is to focus on the client and the recipient and listen to them first as to what they want. And even with that background, I learned an important lesson uh, from you know, when I worked with Bond and Mona and Aaron on my, on my nonprofit. We had an event and Aaron was setting up the blurb little, you know, uh, what, the little video that would market to people to come to attend the event. And he created this rock and roll punk rocker cartoon. And I said, what are you doing? And he said, well, we're attracting people to come to the event. I said, but those aren't the kind of people, that's not what I am. And he said, Rosabelle, we're not attracting what you want. We're attracting what they need. And it's true. We were having that particular program for high school and teenagers. This is separate from youth leadership. This is another program I had who were on the brink or were thinking about drugs or why not take drugs. And we needed to get to that population. I'm right next to Rev, Redlands East Valley High School. And we had several dozen teens show up because of that punk rock cartoon that I hated. But it was the right marketing strategy focusing on the beneficiary of the product you're trying to promote, not for the product. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so Thank much. You. And I'm looking at Melinda. Melinda has recently posted some things from her YouTube. I remember when you gave that TEDx speech in Riverside and it said, give me my energy back. That's marketing. That's keeping the message out there. So if any of you have YouTube videos or presentations that you'd like to share, post it market yourself and keep the the energy alive keep finding new cheese as they said in the book who moved my cheese why was it moved why didn't i follow it why didn't i take advantage of something that's new invigorating maybe makes me a little bit nervous but i took advantage of it and i found it and now I'm going to grow that idea. So hopefully we've all given you something to think about. Luana, what do you think? Uh, you have. And Roosevelt, I, re I remember my mom being able to go to a store and ask for what she wanted. That, that brought back a memory. Uh, but the reminder that we should be focusing on the customer and not what we want is very important and it's something that I think sometimes we forget. We're so busy, speaking for myself, so busy trying to put out what I know and think that they might want that I forget that I should be applying it toward what their needs are. So thank you for the reminder of that. And uh, also, uh, I think I'm, People do sometimes look at me as a role model. I do try to be one because I saw a woman, I remember I was about six years old and I'd never forgotten that woman. I was impressed with the way she was dressed and it made a big difference in me and how I wanted to be as an adult. I still see her standing at that bus stop in that 
green suit with a green coat, green gloves, green hat with a feather in it and the netting coming over her face and, and the gloves and all. And I can see her almost as clear as I did that, that day when I looked out the bus window and saw her. So yes, everybody is a role model, whether you know it or not. Never saw her again. Wouldn't know her if she walked up to me. <laughs> yes. that image yes. is still there. Yes. And the memory of it still lingers. So what you do today will touch someone's life and maybe make a change for them so that they could find their new cheese. So thank you all for supporting Dr. Lawana with her business challenge. 